This nitro was so bad. It's so bad. They have no idea what they're doing. It's like, to this day, I have to hear these fucking idiots talk about Russo and WWF and the boom period. And it's like, there's no way. Like, there's there's two possibilities here. Like, these people are completely, like, clinically moronic, okay? Mm-hmm. That's, like, number one. Is that a thing? Or, it is a thing. Okay. Or, sure the other option is, like, maybe Russo acknowledges them on Twitter, something like that, ah. and so they want to put him over. But they never actually watched any of his stuff, you know what I mean? Sure. Like, there's no way that you can watch this fucking show. And and think for even two seconds that this guy has any fucking idea what he's doing. Mm-hmm. This fucking opening segment. Yes. Oh my god. I mean, really? How did this fucking make air? How did this fucking make air? How did any of this show make air? To answer your specific question about the opening segment, it is entirely possible that he didn't actually tell anyone what he was going to do or say. And just went out there and did uh, it. That's impossible, Vinny. I'm sure there was a detailed script that was 45 pages long. That's the other side of it. Everybody looked and they were like, what the fuck? I'm not reading this TLDR. And they got there and just do this fucking show. I mean, anyway, let's do this raw show. Then I, then I, I almost want to do Nitro first because I'm so furious. I just watched it. Ah, fuck it. Let's do it. We're starting with Nitro. Okay. Get this shit out of the way. WCW Monday Nitro, August 14th of the year 2000. I got another thing I got to say, by the way, which we've never mentioned this before. Let's get it out of the way. I don't like to repeat my shit. This is new. Okay. So we always talk about how, like, we watch these shows and we have no idea what's going on. Mm -hmm. Okay. One of the many reasons that this company died this year is this was the show after New Blood Rising. Okay. Now, this happens all the time, but it really hit me here. They open up this show, and they don't tell you a fucking thing that happened on this pay-per-view. And then they just do the show. Right. And you watch it, and you have no fucking idea what's going on. Now, if this were, for example, UFC in 2010, and like they're doing millions of pay-per-view buys or something like that, one million pay-per-view buys, whatever. I mean, then you could think, well, at least a vast majority or, or at least a, a strong portion of the audience actually does know what's happening. Do you know how few people were buying these pay-per-views? A couple of dozen. A fucking drop in the ocean. Watch these pay-per-views. As compared to how many people were watching Nitro, nobody knew what was going on when this show started. Nobody. Because nobody watched that goddamn pay-per-view. So they come on the air here and they just presume that all two and a half million people watching Nitro watch this pay-per-view. And the number was like 25 people, maybe. Maybe 30. I might even talk like 30,000. I mean, I can't imagine 30. It was me, Craig, you, and like 15 other people bought this fucking pay-per-view. Nobody watched this show. Nobody knows what's going on. And they just fucking barrel on through with the presumption that you know what's happening. How can you be a fan of this? It's impossible. <laughs> they had so few fans, none of their fans were willing to pay a dime for their product. That's fair. You know what I'm saying? None of them were willing to pay a dime. And the people that were willing to watch for free, they don't even know what's fucking going on. Because nobody tells them what's fucking going on. A wretched show. The funny thing about this show is it opened up with Vince Russo, who... I wasn't here last week, but two weeks ago... He wasn't here last week either. No, no, me. No, me he wasn't here. Right. But We're two, right where you are, Craig. Hold, hold on, hold on. Two weeks ago, he had a sit-down interview, and he kept saying over and over and over again, I don't want to be on TV. He's a fucking liar. I thought that was abundantly clear. He said a bunch of shit. It was all lies. And here he is opening up Nitro. This fucking guy, whatever you weren't here last week, whatever questions you have, I fucking have. <laughs> And I was here last week. I, actually I don't watched, know what's going on. I actually watched this show even though I wasn't here. Fuck. Why would you do this? Jesus because Christ. Because I thought I was going to be here. I forgot what happened. All right. Yeah, I yeah. told him at the last time he didn't have to come. Yes. I see. I see. So, yes, Vince Russo, who does not want to be on TV, is on TV. Right. He's in the ring with Tank Abbott. He's using a lot of potty mouth. A piece of shit 
Bill Goldberg. This piece of shit Bill Goldberg. Yeah, what did Bill Goldberg do? We don't even fucking know. No idea. Apparently he didn't, he walked out last night or something. Again. I stood in this very ring one month ago and I made history. I made an example out of somebody. And you all know who it is because that piece of hasn't been around since. Yeah! We can't be on there. Well, tonight, I'm oh, going to make sorry. an example on live TV out of another piece of Goldberg. You don't screw with me. And the fact is, I came here tonight to fire Bill Goldberg's ass on national TV. We knew it was coming. Ugh. We oh, knew man. something like that would go down. Cheer you assholes because you're Canadian. Hey now. We didn't know anything, Scott, in this proof. Well, you know what? Brad Siegel wouldn't let me fire Goldberg because the fans love Goldberg. I went to this show. I went to New Blood Rising in Vancouver, and I don't remember what it was. Should we spoil it, or should we wait for Thursday? In the well, review? there was a match, and okay. Goldberg walked out, and the match, they had to call it on the fly. They had to improvise a finish. They had to improvise a finish. This is what the fucking announcers told us. They've got to improvise a finish, because Goldberg wouldn't cooperate, because he was a crybaby, because he didn't want to lose. Yeah. Are you fucking kidding me? That is the I'm not fucking kidding you. That's what happened. Yeah. Yes. So they they worked a shoot. They worked no, a work. They worked a work. Uh, yes. That's what they did. They worked a work. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what they did. Wow. $62 million down the fucking tubes this year. Wow. So Russo says, I'm going to make an example out of Goldberg. I came to fire him on national TV. Chant for him, assholes, because you're Canadian, he says. Brad Siegel. Who? Who the fuck is Brad Siegel? Like, I know who Brad Siegel is. Did anyone else watching this fucking show know who fucking Brad fucking Siegel is? Guessing he's a higher up in... No, he works at the fucking aquarium. Is who he, fucking knows who Brad Siegel is? Is he a lead singer of Flock of Seagulls? Jesus Christ. Mm. He won't let him fire Goldberg. You can't fire Goldberg. The fans love him. So, he's Not a like they are. He's a, he's a fucking heel the last time I saw him. <laughs> Apparently, Goldberg is a baby face now because the fans love him. I see. He says, Tank is there to kick Bill's ass. Yeah, he says, do you forget what happened to the Phillips Arena? We already saw I'm this. like, I don't know what fucking happened to the I Phillips Arena. I have no idea what I, happened to the Phillips Arena. I presume the Phillips Arena was that Goldberg-Tank-Abbott match that Goldberg won clean. But I don't know. Yes. Because nobody explained it. He only mentioned the Phillips fucking arena. Like, we're supposed to know where every fucking show comes from. Let me consult my records, Vince. I'll see where this Phillips arena show was and what happened there. And then he says, well, what happened there was bullshit. He doesn't yeah. tell us what happened. Okay. He just tells us something fucking happened in the Phillips arena, mm -hmm. and it was bullshit. Correct. Okay, well, that's cool. I don't know what you're fucking talking about, you idiot. And then he says... Goldberg, come out here. You and Tank can call it in the ring. He doesn't even know what a fucking shoot is. A shoot isn't calling it in the fucking ring. Calling in the fucking ring is what two workers do. But he's telling us it's going to be a fucking shoot because he's a goddamn idiot. He said, Bill Goldberg actually actually believes if this were real, he could kick everyone's ass. Yeah. He told you, the viewer, yep. you were watching a fake wrestling show. This show is fake, and this guy that you like, Goldberg, is also fake. And if it were real, he wouldn't be winning. But keep watching, fans. This is the opening segment for a two-hour professional wrestling show. Yes. He doesn't need the practice. And Goldberg, since I could not fire your ass, well, then I'm going to have your ass kicked right here tonight. And he's right here, Bill. Remember what happened? At the Phillips Arena, Bill? Well, we all know that that was So I say, Bill, you bring it out here and let's call it in 
Goldberg. Just, well, no, he's having Tank Abbott call out Bill Goldberg. And what better guy to do it? Tank and sing, dance, and kill people. You know, let me explain something to you ass wipes. Listen up, Madden. You see, Bill Goldberg, Bill Goldberg believes in his own little mind that if this world were real, then he could take everybody. He can take everybody's ass. He could kick your ass, Tank. What do you want me to say? I'm not calling this. No, Bill, you think you're Superman, Bill. You think you're invincible. You think I can't be you, huh? Well, I'll tell you what. I've got the kryptonite to stick straight up your ass tonight, pal. The answers are like, get us out of here. Mm -hmm. they, 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 what do you want us to say about this Russo's shit? Russo's the one who calls for a break, by the way. By the way, this is the show where um, Mark Madden has jumped the shark. We'll get to him later. I'm done with him. So they go back after commercial, and Russo goes over to the announcers, because the cameras focus on the announcers. They're flummoxed, the announcers yeah. are. And Russo goes over there, and he grabs a headset. He starts screaming at Keith Mitchell to show the fight. Show the fight, you hick. Show the fight. Russo's fucked up story that he created is that Tank and Goldberg are having a real fight, but Keith Mitchell won't show it. Okay, That's the idea. That's his idea. Yeah. So then he tells Keith Mitchell the hick, the same Keith Mitchell, by the way, that's, I believe, working for uh, AEW now, but anyway, he tells this guy to uh, show the fight. What? I know we can talk. What are we going to say here? What do I got to do? What can we say do to I gotta this? Do I got to to come out here? Mike. We can't be on the air now. This is like oh. Bizarro World Nitro. What's the matter, Bill? You don't want to come out here? You don't know the script? You don't know the storyline? Take a call. Well, there is no Goldberg. Have we seen Goldberg since last night at New Blood Rising? Guys, uh, in the back, I, I I, don't know what's going on. I can't... Can anybody... Anybody hear me? I I don't... What, what do I do out here? Go to, Vin, Vin says go to a break. Vince says go to break. We better, we better go to yeah, a let's break. Let's go to right break. Out here. Let's go. We're on, I think. What are they shooting us for? I don't know. Not to show. Welcome to Nitro. Hey, Keith, what's the Show it, Keith! He's getting his ass kicked! Show the fight! Show the fight! I'll come back there and I'll beat your hick ass! So they fucking cut to ringside, and these two are having the fakest pro wrestling match you've ever seen. It's not even a good fight. They're doing fucking Irish whips. Goldberg throws a super kick and it misses, and Tank Abbott takes a bump. And I'm like... <laughs> I can't even I can't even fathom this level of fucking incompetence. I can't I can't even fathom it. How did this guy get a job writing this fucking show? How did he get brought back? How did this get on television? And the big question How was he brought back the next week? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, how was he brought back the next week? How was he brought back with another job at another company down the line? Yeah. That's not the only well, that was Dixie hire. Carter, and I mean, you know the story of Dixie Carter. I mean, she was more incompetent than he was. Okay, but, but I was fucking Jesus, God Almighty, Think this is that. this is like absolute insanity. So the only good thing in this segment, and the only good thing on these shows, it turns out, is when Russo says that's it, and they cut away. Right, right. Done with this fucking segment. Shortly before that, uh, they were in Kelowna, British Columbia, and a sign in the crowd reads, "Goldberg fears Ogopogo." <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> That was funny.